So welcome back to part two. We're now going to play with some uh, localized adjustments. So firstly, we're going to um, do what photographers used to do when using a graduated filter to darken down this sky. So over here we have the graduated filter. So we click on that to activate it. And as you can see, there's a complete set of sliders we can use. It remembers the last settings I was doing. So we're just going to double click the word effect. And it resets everything because otherwise you get very scared when you first do it. Let me just show you an example. We'll just drag that right down. You see nothing's happened. We start dragging from here and you just go, oh my God, that's not what we want. So we delete that, click the word effect, everything's zeroed out. So nothing's gonna actually happen when I drag my uh, graduated filter. Now a problem I find a lot of people have when they first start using the graduated filter is they tend to sort of wobble all over the place like this when they're doing it and it just freaks them out so they don't want to do it so what i find the easiest thing to do is if you hold down the shift key and if you click no matter where you take your cursor it does it in a straight line okay i've discussed more about um radial uh, graduated filters and radial filters in other videos so i'm not going to cover that here so let's just take off the overlay so there's there's our graduated filter this will be the full effect, then we have our feather, and then nothing will happen below this line. So let's take down the temperature. Let's just warm it up a little bit. Let's just see how this looks. So can you see we've warmed up that sky? And for doing before and afters, we have this little light switch down here. We just switch that on and off, and it'll show us what we're doing. Um, we'll darken it a little bit, let's take it down maybe half a stop, okay that's looking pretty reasonable and we'll take the highlights down a little bit, and let's go a little bit further than that, and we'll take our whites down a little bit, we'll just punching up this sky and we'll add a little bit of clarity which will punch a little bit back into it and I think we'll let's just see what the dehaze does it brings a little bit of detail now I've just noticed a mistake I've made I didn't warm, want to warm that up I wanted to cool it down because I wanted to bring the blue back into the sky silly me let's go the other way can you see yes so no matter how much you prepare for these things little bits will always catch you out so there we go we've got brought our blues back so and if 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 we think it's too strong we can move it up and down we can do anything we like so i, th I think that's sort of where we want to be yeah let's let's stop about there and again you can just tick the light switch on and off so that's looking pretty nice so now we need to do one down here so you come up here and you click new which allows you to do a new drag so again if you're worried about it flying all over the place let's just hold down the shift key and bring it up as we want it now obviously we want it to be going that way but we've just made our lives easier by doing that as soon as we hover over the middle line can you see we get the the lightroom symbol for rotate so we just click on there and we're able to rotate that around now we want to just get it like like that okay so what we're basically doing is we're bringing up some interest in this water because it just looks muddy and wrong so let's again take down our temperature not warm it up take it down we want the water to look blue so we'll go down can you see how we've again with the on off switch now remember we've now got two um graduated filters so it's going to show us both of them but at least we can see this one turning on and off and we're getting a nice blue which we want to be a reflection of the sky and we've told the sky to be blue up here so this better be blue down here 
and now it's all just a little bit too bright so we're going to take the exposure down and i like to use the up and down arrow keys particularly when i'm changing exposure because it feels like the computer keeps up with me when when i drag these things around i sometimes think um oh, i've gone too far but the computer hasn't caught up with me and then suddenly it makes a big lurch or i go back too much and it makes another lurch in the opposite direction and this way i feel like i'm in control of it so i i think we're we're almost there we just need a little bit um more punch to that so let's see what happens let's try the dehaze yeah look at look at how it's really it's 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 almost like i'm doing saturation not dehaze at all so let's have a look at that and we might just go up a little bit further. Uh, no, we'll keep we'll keep it there. But we don't particularly want to be affecting the boat of the bank. You see the bank's gone back into shadow again. So what we'll do is we'll click on the brush tool, get our friendly eraser, and we can now just paint out parts of this. So we're just taking little bits out to sort of balance it back up a little bit. So let's just switch that on and off again. We could probably do with a little tiny bit there as well. Let's turn on the overlay so we can see what we... Ooh, so we've missed a big chunk here. Let's... So we're getting much, much closer to a finished image. So let's click done on that. So our before and after again. Look at that. That's just fabulous. Now we could leave it there, but I'm going to take it into a part three and we're going to use the um, radial filter to add a little couple of splashes of light. Join us for that. Thanks.